chicken pilau. You like how it's looking? Just keep looking, keep watching, and you would see how this delicious, delicious chicken pilau was made. Back to my kitchen and channel. Anna Cherry's Caribbean Kitchen. Tasty cooking, simply delicious. You can find me on YouTube or Facebook. So, this is my chicken, one whole, one chicken cut up in pieces. I have sprinkled black pepper. And I have here my regular green seasoning that I use. And I have here some soy sauce. And this is for pilau. It's one of the popular dishes in the Caribbean. It's one of my favorites as well. So this is the first step to that delicious pot of pilau. It consists of chicken. You can use whatever beans you want, pigeon peas or black eyes or red beans or chickpea or chana whichever one you want to use some people put black beans in it as well and with vegetables carrots and sweet pepper pimentos onions you know ginger so this is the first step to the seasoning of the chicken and I'll show you the next step let me give you a closer look to that chicken so it's well seasoned. Okay. Easy, easy, easy. And I'll show you the next step. Stay tuned. So this is the chicken for the pilau. And I'll show you the rest of ingredients that I use. Here I have my onions, finely cut up. I have my garlic and pimentos and ginger, finely chopped up as well I have tomatoes that's cut it up as well I have carrots that's finely diced as well sweet peppers I have my sprig of thyme fine thyme I have here some chives and some celery that's cut up fine I have ketchup I have lamb perry or Worcestershire sauce I have soy sauce I have my light salt, so let's get putting this together into one pot. So to the pot here that I have heating, I have a couple tablespoons of oil, and for that, I will add up a couple tablespoons of brown sugar to heat caramelize up a little bit to get to that golden brown color. I'll show you what it looks like. You see how it started to bubble up and to change that color. So it's kind of on the golden brown color right now. We need it a little on the dark side but not too dark. Just as soon as that golden color starts to turn on the brown side, that's when we're going to add our ingredients. Because we don't want the chicken pilau to taste on the burnt sugar side. So that color is fine for me. Here I have my onions and my chicken. Add the two together and in goes that chicken. And I have added some ketchup here.
let that fry up for a little bit on high. You're going to add your sprig of thyme. You're going to add your onion and garlic and ginger and pimento mixture, some of it. going to add some of your, tom well, your, your tomatoes, tomato. You're going to add in some hot pepper, pieces of hot pepper. If you want to cut the whole thing up, that's fine. It depends how spicy you want it and how much people are eating spicy food in your home. And the scent of that ginger and garlic and pimento, amazing. It has let out some juices here. Here is where you will add your salt. I use my light salt. You can use whatever salt you want. My Worcestershire sauce. Or Worcestershire sauce. And I have here my soy sauce. One tablespoon of that goes in. Now I'm starting up with one tablespoon. And when I add that rice and I give it that mix, I will know to add more. Right now we just need to flavor up this chicken. This is the base for that pillow. And you can substitute the chicken and use whatever meat you want in it. Beef is an option. Or whatever meat you prefer. You're going to give that a taste. Because as I said, this is the base for your chicken pillow. And for that chicken to allow to taste delicious, this has to be delicious. I have here one full teaspoon of my green seasoning that I use in most of my, well, in everything you can see this goes into most of my dishes. I will leave that link in the description box at the bottom. Your basic green seasoning will consist of tanzania, garlic, pimentos, hot peppers. If you want, you can add celery to it. If you're doing it in the food processor, if you're doing it in the blender, you can feel free to add chives as well. You're going to cover this, let it cook, let that chicken cook a little bit and then I'll show you the next step. Now that the chicken has cooked up for a little bit, after that 10 minutes, we're going to add our second layers of this dish. Now, pilau is a very, very popular dish here in the Caribbean. Chicken pilau, especially around carnival time or Christmas time or any occasion, especially for a beach. 
beach line, you're going to the beach, you don't want to buy food, you want to, you know, cook your home food. Pilau is the go-to beach food here. So here I have two cups of rice already washed. And in goes that. Two cups of parboiled rice, brown rice. And we're going to give this a mix. It's a one pot meal, so it's very easy to cook together. When people going to the beach or on beach line or excursion, they get up like early in the morning. This is what they make and carry with them to the beach. So I'm going to let this start to cook up and I'll show you the next step. It's just going to take like five minutes, cover it, i leave it on medium. Let's check it after putting in that rice. So you hear that sizzle, that is what you want to hear. That way you know that rice is fried up a little bit. And it's going to get all that flavor, so you know that flavor that we put it in, added in before. Time for the peas or the beans. I'm using pigeon peas today. It's a can of pigeon peas. You can use whatever beans you prefer. I'm adding in one teaspoon of that green seasoning again. Give that a mix. Whatever you like in pilau, you can add it. That's the good thing about it. It's a nutritious one pot dish. And for this, I'm going to add my hot water now. I always have my water heating in the kettle. We're going to add hot water and this will continue to cook. This is four cups of water. You can put back something hot for the heat while this is cooking because you might need some more at the end of it. This is one pot of chicken, the two cups of rice, the one can of beans, and the vegetable is one carrot, one sweet pepper, some celery, some sides, one onion, three pimentos, a piece of ginger, a couple cloves of garlic. So now I'm going to cover this and let it cook. When it's almost done, that's when those vegetables or veggies goes in. And I'll show you what that looks like when I'm adding in the veggies. So after it has, that rice has sucked up all that liquid, all that juices. Not too dry, not too wet, this is halfway in between. It has a beautiful color. And what I'm going to do now, I am going to add in half of my chives and celery. And I'm also going to add in some more of that ginger and garlic and pimento mix. In goes my carrots. In goes my sweet pepper. I'm going to give this a mix. Now this is the time where you have to add your veggies. If you want to add more veggies, depending on what you're using, feel free. You can add corn, you can add broccoli, you can add um, cauliflower, whatever veggies you like. You can add pumpkin, just cube it up and put it. Some people like to add okros as well too. You can go ahead. I mean, I love my okros, but I don't like that slimy consistency it gives out to the pillow. And in goes 
some water. Then you will have to taste this dough before adding in that water. Just give it a taste. See what it's missing. If it's missing salt, go ahead and add that salt. So I'm adding in some water here again. That's about two cups of water. Because as I said, the rice isn't finished cooking as yet. It's halfway through. So it's still hard on the hard side. And it's delicious already. So now I'm going to cover it back. The rest of your celery and chives, just sprinkle it to the top. Take a teaspoon of that um, garlic and ginger and tomato mix and sprinkle one teaspoon on the top. And cover your pot back. Leave it on medium heat. Give it a 10 minutes and I'll show you what it looks like again. So after that second set of water, that second two cup of water, and after adding in the veggies, this is what it will look like. Now, when you're turning off the stove, this is the part where you turn off the stove, when it's a little on the wet side. Because it is going to, that rice is going to continue to suck up all that juices. So if you don't want it to dry, 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 this is the point where you turn that stove off. And I will give you a closer look at your pillow because it is going to dry up more. Right now it's on the grainy, grainy side. It's on the wet side, right? Soupy side, you can see. We're going to cover back this pot and let it continue to dry out and I'll show you the end results of this pillow. So after it has covered, after I turned off that stove and it has covered, this is what it would look like. You see how that water dried up? Most of that water has dried up. And it will continue to keep drying up a little bit. So that's why you have to know when to turn off that stove at the right time because we don't want a too dry, dry pillow either, either. And I will show you what it looks like. See, delicious, delicious pillow. I'll show you a closer look. And that's it. Chicken pillow.